welcome back part two of the hair wing series um, today we're gonna do a Susquehanna white fly in Kelly's final link style to highlight the short fine belly hair that I talked to on the on the uh, uh, 20 22 hairs rewind or recap so to speak so this is going to give the first glimpse of the versatility of this of this short fine belly that white fly on the Susquehanna um, it's so prolific there's certain years that it'll show up on the radar um, there, there's just flies everywhere I got a chance to fish it a couple of years back when I was a uh, when I was a teenager and it was it was just insanity my buddy smoked at the time and he would just take a chunk of a cigarette and throw it out there on a light and he would be or on a you know ultra light and he would be catching fish it, it, it's just wild um, so not really the uh, fly itself that we're highlighting because I mean you're, you're after smallies and it's not like necessarily imperative that you're imitating the fly what I really wanted to, to highlight was the versatility of the hair um, so we're gonna go ahead and get into that and um, let me think here I'm missing one material there we go so this is a four material fly um, we're gonna go ahead and get into this one like I was saying I'm on a size 14 and I'm going to start this at about the two-thirds point. I'm going to leave about a third of the hook exposed. I'm going to take this back to where the thread meets the ascent of the barb of the hook. Cut off that excess. And then I'm going to bring my hair back. I just have a... Oh, this is a barred ginger neck here. I'm just going to take couple of strands to use for my tail section that's way too many oh we'll call that what? five to seven strands five to seven we're gonna measure this out hi Cameron we're gonna measure this out. I'm just gonna go slightly longer than the length of the hook. I'm gonna set that in and then secure it from that two-thirds point back. And then I'm gonna bring my thread back to that section there because that's where I'm gonna tie the body section in. Now, this is the first portion of the deer hair that we're tying. Hey Cam. She's very interested in what we got going on here. This is just a chunk of the the uh, short belly that I wasn't able to make a 2 by 3 out of so I'll keep that one to tie with myself, do some videos and everything and experiment a little bit more on what its what its capabilities are. So I'm just going to take a chunk here, let me get that in the camera, you can see right there. Decent amount, this is going to be my body section, so I'm going to throw this in the stacker. Set that in there. And I'm going to get these tips nice and evened up. That's pretty good there. I'll see if I like it once I get it next to the hook. Oh yeah, that's going to be pretty good. That's going to be pretty good. Now, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we'll let that go. So I'm going to measure this out, and I want these tips extending just back into the beginning of the tail. So I'm going to transfer hands and I'm going to cut that square. Like I said, this is going to be my body section. There's... 
I'm gonna make one wrap fairly loose. A second one, I'll start to tighten that down. And then I'm gonna go on to that bare hook and then back to the initial wrap that I made. So now I'm just gonna move this back and that's, that's too long. That's too long. I'm gonna get rid of that. That was too long. I'm, I misjudged it. Misjudged it. So if it's not gonna do what you need it to do, there's no shame in just starting over. No shame in starting over. All you lose is just a little bit of material. I think when I transferred that in my hand, it may have, may have slid a little bit. Those tips were going to wind up going halfway back of my tail. So, not what we want. Alright, we'll stack this again. We'll get it right this time. Alright. Measure that out to where the tips are going to be going right to where the tail starts. Cut that off square and like I was saying before I messed that up, you'd see that thread wanting to wanting to kick to the right on me there so we're just going to give it a counterclockwise spin and that'll fall right back into my hand. So there's one, two, Pull down slightly. Transfer this over. Now that those tips are going to go right where I want them now. If I had done that before, or if I had done that with the previous one, it just wouldn't have made a, a clean fly. So no shame in taking a minute and getting the, getting it right. All right. So now I'm pushing that hair down around the hook because this hair is going to be the body of this fly. And now I'm just going to make nice even wraps with my thread to make up the segment segmentation on that body. And I'm going back to the ascent of the barb of the hook and then I'm going to make two wraps right there. You can see that tail just kind of flares out a little bit but you're, you still have that original tail that we tied in visible. Now we're going to make a wrap opposite direction of what we made our wraps originally. And then we're going to stop right there. You can see that nice taper on the body. Everything's nice and clean. That hair's coming right around here. And it just adds a little bit of dimension to the back of that. It's going to add a hell of a lot more flotation as well. Now we're going to tie in our pair of posts. Well, it's not really a post. This is going to be our spent wing, but this is some Z-Lawn. just in white. Then I'm going to take this and I want this to be pretty thick. Like you can see that right there when I stretch it out and then relax it. it it's decently thick but not as thick as I would like it for this one so I'm going to double it up just like that and I'm going to cut this right in the center. I want this this spent wing section or whatever it may be. I want it to be thicker. Um, this is pair post actually. I was right the first time I said it. If you're using the Z-Lawn, you're probably not going to have to use as much. But this pair post is a little bit more sparse than the Z-Lawn. So then I'm just going to take that. I'm going to find the center point right here. I'm going to pinch that down right where my my body ended right at the thorax. And I'm just going to make one tight wrap, semi-tight wrap, right down in the center. So now I'm going to take and figure eight this, just to get my wings in that spent section. 
or that spent position. And you can already see they're, they're starting to really take shape for us. There's going to be some trimming that we're going to have to do on this. Make sure my head's out of the way. There'll be some trimming that we're going to have to do on this, but I'll leave that here for, for a little bit. I'll trim it all up at the end. So now I'm going to get a couple of wraps just right in front of here just to kind of clean everything up. Now this is a material um, you wouldn't really have to use because if you look on the bottom like it's a pure white fly you don't really need it because that's all white down there on the bottom but this adds just a little bit of kick to it. Um, I'm going to take some pearl UV dubbing just the slightest amount just the slightest amount and I'm going to spin that around my thread enough to give me maybe four or five wraps really really tight around that thread okay and I'm going to go right over that figure eight that I used to put the wings in place and then I'm going to get one right in front but to make sure that I still have that nice clean platform right here to tie in that last section of deer hair that's going to be the overwing. Now from the underside you're not going to see it too well because I don't have good light coming from this back camera but that's going to add a little bit of flash right through there um, on a really bright sunny day that's really going to pop um, and it just adds a little bit like, like I said not necessary whatsoever but it just adds a little bit um, I mean, hell, my buddy was catching with cigarette butts, so I don't, I don't think the, that is necessary, but to the fly tire, it adds a little bit. Alright, now I'm going to take a good chunk of this short belly. Just like we did with the Comparadon, I'm going to take more than what I what you would typically think you need okay like I said this was a mistake I made a lot when I was younger I did not take near enough hair so there again you can see the butt end section of the stuff that I'm taking and I'm probably gonna add a little bit to that actually I'm gonna throw that in my comb and I'm just gonna take one more probably about half that amount I'm going to take about half that amount, clean this up, and you can watch all of that that's going to drop out of there just running my running my scissors through it, and then I'm going to run it through the comb, and that's what I end up with. So definitely a decent amount of drop, but I'm going to add that to the original pile that I had, and then I'm going to throw that in the stacker, even everything up. That stacker, you can't see it, but it's probably three quarters of the way full. All right, tips are nice and even. Everything's clean there. I'm gonna take that out with my left hand, pinch right there. And this is where you're gonna see just how fine this hair is. If you tried to do this with a, with belly hair from a short fine hide in a colder climate this stuff would flare so much on you like I I had a couple um, from previous years that were short fine and I tried doing this with it the hairs are so much more coarse and they're actually bigger hair like they're 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 not this really fine hair like I would probably have half the amount number wise of hair here from a northern tier or a colder climate deer than what I do here. So there's that, that's nice and clean, nice and even, and when I flare this, you're gonna see just how easy this stuff is to work with and how clean of a result you can get from it. All right, so I'm gonna measure this out. I want it the length of my hook. 
I'm going to take this and just like I'm tying in a caddis wing, I'm going to trim that nice and clean. You can see the amount of hair that I have right there. That's a decent amount of hair. Pretty thick amount. I'm going to set that. Let me get my thread set where I want it first. I want this just off of the eye of the hook, right in front of that para post material. So then I'm going to go one, two, and I'm going to pull that down, and it gives me that nice cat style bulbous head right there. Now I'm going to take and press this with my finger just like I'm tying in a wing case. Well, well, I rolled that one. I was trying to get too cute with it. Trying to get too cute. So we'll do this again. We'll do this again. If you can't tell, I'm a little rusty. It's been a year since I've tied a fly, so little rusty. I'll zip through this one. I won't talk near as much as I did on the last section going through this. I'll zip through it. Alright, got everything nice and cleaned out. Everything's good there. Throw this in the stacker, get rid of a couple long hairs. Stacker once again is about three quarter of the way full. Tips are nice and even. I won't mess it up this time. Alright, transfer hands. I got this in my right hand. Everything's looking good right there. Measuring this out to where it's the length of my body, and that body is counting the excess from the body that I used on, on this hair. Or the body, or the the hair that I originally used for the body, I should say. So we're gonna go one, two, and then I'm gonna go right around the eye of that hook on the bare hook. This is actually cleaner than the first one that I did. Now I'm gonna whip finish. You can see that nice flare on the on the front of the hook, caddis style. We have a nice wing set. Now I'm going to pull that pair of post out. I'm just going to pull it straight down. And I'm going to take a clean cut right there. All right, now I'm going to pull this stuff out. That's giving me that nice para post or that spent wing look. And I'm just going to trim this ever so slightly on the front to where I'm going to not have that really distinct fan wing on the front. I want to try and curb some of that out of there. So I'm going to cut that down. Just like so. I want to round that front off and then bring this section right here and round that back off some. There we go. So there you have on the underneath side, clean that up just slightly. A nice clean underneath side you have that spent wing section right there and then you have your caddis style wing on the top following Kelly's found link uh, platform you have a nice Susquehanna whitefly um, this thing will float for you all day long there's no need for any sort of floating or anything like that the buoyancy on the body of the hair 
and then this also the overwing and everything you don't need anything it, it'll float all day for you fish after fish um, no issues whatsoever there stumbled through it a little bit like I said I'm a little bit rusty it'll take me a while to get back into uh, being a little bit more fluid on the vise but that'll happen after a year on the, uh, a year being away from it I guess but anyhow there's the Susquehanna Whitefly on Kelly Spawn Link profile or platform. Uh, if you guys have any questions or comments, let me know and I'll get back to you. Thanks.